we're at uh, Product Tricer 2021, what's new in Electronics TV. I'm here with Chris from Europlacer. Thanks for joining us. Um, My now, pleasure. I understand you're in, we spoke uh, earlier on with Francois from Europlacer about the, the whole business, and he mentioned the North American operation, which you're sales director of. Um, so it'd be interesting to see hear from you you know how has that developed over the past few years I mean is that is that a relatively new thing or has that been a long-term operation? Well, I've been with Europlacer for 10 years and I've seen the business grow 15 to 22 percent annually over the last 10 years yeah. we've doubled the size of the business a couple of times right. really focused um, I've got the the benefit of Getting a lot of support from the factory and a lot of focus on the U.S. market. Yep. A lot of investment in a, in a new demo center and personnel. We've hired quite a bit. We've grown from, you know, just one or two people when I started to I think we have about 14 now right, yeah. in the yeah. states. And uh, the the support from the factory has been great. We've we've doubled the size of the factory to support the growth of the business oh, right, right. Yeah. and uh, you know in a in a terrible time I hate to say it we had the best year of our yeah. Yeah. of my career last year yeah. and then we're on target to beat that by a little bit this year yeah have you I mean we were talking this morning with Francois about um, how they've done uh, changed the business to work you know a lot of remote meetings and mm. diagnostics all the sort of kind of things you can do now and that's you know it's fantastic that often in a situation of um, uh, pressure and adversity we're forced to innovate aren't we mm -hmm. have you you know how has that worked in the north american market have you adapted the same way or come it's up with been trial solutions? and error for <laughs> sure um it was very difficult to get used to the the, the distance between us and the impersonality of of doing zoom meetings and then we got into doing actual demos online and you have to get all the right technology and you have to suffer through a few disasters before you get it right and i see all my competitors are are doing the same they've all improved over the last couple of years in, in that regard and we've got it down pretty good now and i think the customers are getting used to the distance and it not being so personal and then we're still trying to get out to anybody we can because there's no replacing that that one-on-one uh, -on -one face to face with somebody but we've got through it and like I said it's been two fantastic years yeah, yeah. the proof is in the pudding as they say can you without naming names or divulging too many details that customers would not thank you for. Could you give me a kind of a case study of one of those that you've handled through the lockdown periods to see, you know, how a, how a you know, project pans out from you? I mean, even just the amount of time it takes to go from that first, the customer has a requirement, coming through, working out, finding out what they want, then often finding out what they need is something slightly different and making those come together and delivering your solution to them. I'll put you on the spot now. You've put me on the spot for <laughs> sure. Um, without divulging customers, you know, I spend most of my time on conquest sales, on converting right. yeah. customers from other pick and place to our brands. Yeah. And that's difficult enough in person, and it's become much more difficult to do it virtually. Yeah. Um, very recently, we've had a, an open house down in Phoenix uh, at our new center of excellence. Right. And we've got a full lineup of equipment there and personnel. And I had a customer who was interested before all of this happened. And then they kind of slowed down and they went away for a little while. Yeah. And then they came back and they wanted to know what was new. They had a project that, that they felt we were right for. And they were considering converting their existing equipment, all of it, to another vendor through I, lack of support or yeah whatever not enough speed I'm not sure exactly all the reasons that they decided they were going to change but what they told me was they had a new customer that they were going to be building for and our equipment from what they remembered looked like it was right so they called me up and we set up a demo down in uh, in Phoenix and we did a fantastic job my guys really bought the right processing equipment and the right cameras and all the right 
audio equipment so that it looked right, it sounded right, yeah. and we were able to do it live. They were able to ask questions. They were they sent some parts down, and we were able to, you know, take the parts out of the box, show them it was their parts, put it on the machine, teach the parts, and then populate their board right there in front of them online. Yeah. And I guess some of the demos they had seen before weren't so successful. Yeah. So that was a good barometer for me that we yeah. were starting to do that right. And and since we've had other, other my, some of my other sales guys have had very similar situations right. yeah, and yeah. succeeded yeah. online. Fantastic. I mean that, you know, it's, conquest sales are the toughest thing, aren't they? At the best of times. So to, to be able to seal something like that during this situation is, is pretty significant. It, you know, the hardest thing for Europlacer, we're not the best known brand in the world, but once we do get in the door and we've got thoughtful engineers that are really evaluating our technology, we rise to the top of the list. We've, you know, the electrical test, the three-dimensional positioning system with force control. Our, in America, we have a five-year warranty on our machine and right. free dial-in service, uh, you know, remotely yeah. for life yeah. for a customer. And, and there's a, a list a mile long. Yeah. So our message does translate well to customers that have maybe not been treated so well by their vendors, vendors yeah. that charge a lot for their service. And we separate ourselves from our competition like that. We really focus on servicing the customer and not not bleeding them dry after the sale yeah. and having PO after PO for silly little service calls and lots and lots of spare parts. It's, we're different in that regard yeah. for sure. Yeah, and do you find the you know, North American market is, well, it must be different to the European market, to the Chinese market, you know, that your customers, they've got specific requests and they've got specific ways they'd like to deal with you as a partner, I guess. You know, they're not going to be, you know, you can't apply the same template to every territory, can you? No, over here, you guys are selling through distributors or, or the vendors are selling through distributors. So sometimes over here, you don't even have contact directly with the customer, the distributor service them. Over in the States, we have direct partnerships and I have relationships for, with, I'm directly responsible for managing the accounts that are mine as are my sales guys yeah. and they're you know the service team is fantastic but behind them we're always you know keeping watch on what's going on in the yeah. accounts so i think it might be a little more personal in the united states and and we've focused on winning we've won eight service excellence awards in a row in the pick and place industry yeah. and seven out of eight for screen printing we also uh, own speed print the, co yeah. the company speed print yeah. So it is a little different over there. It's much more personal. I, yeah. I kind of know a lot about all of my customers, friends with many of them. Yeah. It's interesting, isn't it? How that, how the, you know, the variations are. And then having someone on the ground that is attuned to that <laughs> and can make the right decisions is essential, isn't it? It is. We are, I think we're a little closer to our customers. Yeah, yeah. Have they, you know, have the, the customers, well, their needs probably won't have changed, but have their expectations changed through lockdown? Have they wanted you to be more... I get the impression, talking to people, that a lot of uh, customers have gone from being so demanding to actually saying, right, how can we work together on these things? They have... They, they do understand the challenges out there of, of the travel and, and all the testing and people getting sick and... Um, We've been lucky because it's been our, our our mission to support them remotely as much as possible. I think the, the most recent survey was like 93% of calls that we get from customers that they're having a problem with their machine, it won't do this or it's doing that and they don't know what's wrong. We solve remotely 30 minutes or less. We dial into the machine yeah. and we can operate yeah. it. We can tell them what's wrong with it and look at the error codes and spy files and figure it out so that yeah. they can fix it. They don't have to go to their boss and get a purchase order. Yeah. And it saves the operators, the operators love us because they don't have to go to the boss and get the PO. And it, if it was something silly, it saved them three, four grand and a day or two of downtime. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. And, and so we haven't seen a lot of difference in how our customers are acting because we usually support them that way. Yeah. It is sometimes a challenge when there is something wrong that a, a guy has to be on site. Yeah. And they can't get there. Yeah. And the customers are a little more forgiving. They're not 
screaming at you, you've got to be here yeah. right now. They're like, okay, I'll take next Thursday, thank you. So yeah. yes, yeah. I think they're, yeah. and we foster a partnership with them. So they are a little forgiving in challenging times, yes. And those partnerships are important, aren't they? Because they help you improve everything you do. So if it, it's a two way street, isn't it, all the time? We absolutely have learned a lot from our customers, learned how to service them better. Some of our big customers have new requirements and they teach us what they need. We send it to the applications guys and the engineers yeah. over at the factory. And we have pretty quick turnaround on special projects. Right. And we've done that yeah. quite a few times over the last year or so. It seems there's, there's quite a sort of um, smart thinking in your place. So you know that you're quick to adapt to what people need, but you're also still small enough and it strikes me that everyone pulls together as a team to make those things work so you're probably more agile which is a, one of those hackneyed terms There's we not use not a lot of bureaucracy it's yeah. you know there are there is a hierarchy of ownership and uh management but it's mostly flat everywhere else yeah. and i can call a partner or a friend or somebody overseas and get a, a problem solved that we're having trouble solved we're in direct communication with the factory, you know, a dozen times a week. Right, yeah. It's, it's yeah. very, we're quick to respond because yeah. there's not a lot of bureaucracy and we don't have to ask a lot of permissions to get things done and, right. and the people at the factory are incredibly responsive. Oh, good, yeah. So it's been a good year and you're looking forward to another good year next year by the sounds of it. It's yeah. looking good. The yeah. end of the year is, it's closing up strong. And that leads to a nice backlog going into next yeah. year. Who knows what next year holds, but yeah. it's uh, yeah. it, it definitely looks good. Good, good. Well, thanks for spending the time, Chris. It's been good to see you. Um, it's you know it's nice to be actually be able to speak to people face to face. We can oh, take our face. mask off for a second. Yes. I do. I have a nose and a mouth <laughs> and a face. Yeah. It's actually the thing I've noticed is a lot of people. You know, you see the same faces year after year, don't you? It's really hard working out who they are now. So. <laughs> but thanks for sparing the time. I um, hope the rest of the show is really good for you. It looks like there's a lot of uh, visitors, so. It's been busy. Don't First worry, yeah, day, so and tomorrow's supposed yeah. to be better. Brilliant. Okay.